In order to tell the story about how we got in touch, we must first talk about the telephones. Decades of commercial interest and technical strength had connected the country through telephone lines. At the heart of this system, behind all the wires and circuits and switches, were the exchange operators. They were known for their impeccable manners, cordial service, and mostly their inviting voices. It was the sound of their voices that had captivated people with the telephone service. The telephone companies often complained that the operator's voices were possibly too warm as the customers lingered on the line to speak personally and at length with the women. This was noted outside of the phone companies as well. In the basement of a hidden and important building, a classified project was conceived by a covert central agency. The plan was known by codename Project Chatter. The agency hoped to learn about suspicious activities and lurking threats to the nation's security. It was during these tense times that the central agency looked for new and obscured ways to tap into the minds of people. The agency recognized the significance of the telephone operator's voices. Earlier tests had shown that the general population reacted generously to specific vocal tones found in these voices. Callers would respond with private information and lessened inhibition when the operators asked, is there anything else I may help you with today? The agency quickly assumed control of the telephone corporations. With only minor technical adjustments, they were able to strengthen the resonance of the operators' voices in hopes that people would share guarded information on the line. The operators were largely kept in the dark about their role in the project. They were only told, keep them talking, keep them on the line. As the plan went into effect, caller after caller yielded to the operator's tempting voices. The callers spoke freely. They revealed secret engagements and suppressed feelings. They spoke of hidden inclinations and concealed hobbies. The agency was pleased with the initial exchanges and encouraged the operators to push the boundaries of telephone etiquette further The more the operators pressed, the more the callers spoke without reserve. The callers discussed rambunctious and unruly fantasies. They shared rounds of strenuous and experimental escapades. They talked in throaty whispers and heavy breaths. The calls made the generally modest operators bashful, but soon they found themselves stirred by the calls and began to share their own appetites and proclivities with the callers. All of the conversations with the operators were thoroughly recorded, obsessively archived, and played in heavy rotation for the central agency. They spent long hours holed up in listening booths, endlessly replaying the recordings, citing passages, and trying to pose as operators themselves to have closer contact with these exchanges. They said they needed to listen to the recordings to investigate, to learn about the nation, to understand what we are made of, as they reached again for the rewind lever. Countless numbers of people opened up on the phone before Project Chatter was disbanded. Testing on civilians had fallen out of favor. No threats to domestic safety were ever uncovered yet other disclosures were revealed. The nation had been intimately changed by these emissions, and with these newly expressed tastes came a new era.
the conversations that had begun with the operators were continued in person with one another. The public explored these impulses and inclinations with an insatiable dedication. It was the beginning of times to come.